there is design in the world. This chair is designed and we design things and I, it feels like it's that sort of human urge of creating God in your own image that we presume that if we can design things and make things, that anything else that appears to work well must be therefore designed by somebody else, but then you're something that's sort of outside of the universe, which is very odd, then you then get into a curious thing of, well, wouldn't that thing be part of the universe? And then, of course, if he designed that, then who designed him and so on? I suppose people think, well, those things can't just happen by accident, and they sort of, I guess that's just a, a simple misreading of, of evolution. Those things have been designed, if you want to use that word, by a natural process that's taken all this time to make something that works as well as possible. So it's not surprising that these things work very well because they're brilliantly evolved. That's not, this, but to use the word designed is just, I think, a projection of what we do, that we find it difficult to think outside of our own little box of our own little experience. We project that onto what we create God to be. I used to do a, a trick. I used to go around the tables um, when I did magic in restaurants with a playing card. It was always the Queen of Hearts, and I would hold it with the card facing me and I'd go to a lady at the table, and I'd say, it's interesting, um, people name cards that always say something about them. Um, what, what's your favourite card? And there's a slight psychological push for a lady to say Queen of Hearts there. And um, if she said Queen of Hearts, I'd turn it around. Certainly much better than one in 52 chance, probably about one in four, one in five. I'd turn it around, and she had a miracle. And if she didn't say it, I hadn't flagged up this card was important, so I'd put it away. I'd bring out a deck of cards and do a trick with whatever card she said. But what was interesting about it was that when it did hit, when it was right, it was such a miracle for that person that short of them seeing the bigger picture, that actually I've gone and done this at every table, that maybe was the only one time it worked that night, it, it becomes a miracle because they, they want to believe that I've done something, that I've put some intention into that to make that happen, whereas in fact I'm just relying purely on chance. I mean, I've, and I've always thought of that as a nice metaphor for people coming away from a psychic and saying, well, she told me that my grandmother used to work in a florist. And then you go, well, how do you, how do you explain that? And you think, well, you can't explain it, but maybe if you step back, maybe she says that to any number of people. Maybe, you know, short of knowing, getting the bigger picture, your own, your own personal experience can be so misleading. And I think in a similar way, there is a, a tendency and urge for magicians to sort of take, take credit for the coincidences and randomness sometimes, or chance events. I'm really interested in this pattern of reasoning where people want to attribute design to objects in the natural world, like fruit or... Well, in fact, you, <laughs> funny you mention fruit. Um, <laughs> a, because I have a banana here, and B, because there's a, um, there's a video on YouTube. And to me, it brilliantly encapsulates what's sort of wrong about the design argument. It's happened to have one here. Um, the, you had a couple of guys claiming that the banana proves that God exists because it's so perfectly designed for us to hold. So we have these phalanges here of our fingers that fit perfectly around the facets of the banana. There you go. Now that can't happen by accident. Um, it's got a rubbery grip, so we're not, we're not going to drop it. It won't slip from our hands. And, uh, and there's a lovely moment, I can't remember exactly how he says it, but it's something like, and in the same way that soda cans have a, a ring pull, in the same way, God has given us this on the top, and it doesn't spurt everywhere, it doesn't spurt on your face. Yeah, that's really interesting, because David Hume, the 18th century philosopher, has a, a brilliant analysis of that style of reasoning that moves from apparent design in the universe to the conclusion there must have been a designer. And Hume goes through all these sort of moves showing, I think, in, as a conclusion, that if you proportion the belief to the available evidence, mm. the most you could possibly say is, and he was writing in the 18th century prior to Darwin, yeah. um, the most that you could possibly say is there is some designer. The attributes of the designer are really an open question. Yes, if you're making huge claims about anything, you know, if I say that I believe Father Christmas exists, it's not up to you to prove that he doesn't, it's up to me to come up with really good evidence to back up such an extraordinary claim. And I think that's it's such a simple thing. And the fact that was, you know, written around that Enlightenment time and it seems so relevant nowadays. And people go, well, you can't prove God doesn't exist. <laughs> well, there is that flip side because, yeah. well, no, you can't prove absolutely that God yeah. doesn't exist, but surely there's enough evidence on which to make to live a life that it's highly unlikely, highly unlikely yeah. exists, and just as it's highly unlikely that this room is about to spontaneously combust. Certainly quite noisy.